right, well, thanks for having me. Okay, right, so I'm Megan Smith, I'm Cosand on Twitter, and I'm going to talk to you about embedding narrative today, um, or, if I can, there we go, extending social space. Um, and in particular, I'm actually going to talk to you about a project I did here in Leeds called Our City, Our Music. So actually, I'm going to talk to you about how I came here to be here. Um, and actually, as my work often references map, mapping, um, I thought I'd actually tell you a story about how I came to be here in Leeds, since this event is all about Leeds. Um, I grew up here. This is the Ottawa Valley in the Pontiac in Canada. And um, it's not uncommon to actually hear psychologists and theorists say that your childhood affects your daily life and your future. And so the way that it, um, I've come to see these influences, as I've, I've found them very important in my practice. And I use them now. I, I kind of work to those strengths and use them in my daily events that happen in my life. Um, so this is the main highway, the 148. And it's pretty much the artery that crosses the fields uh, the forests and goes down to the river from where, where I grew up. There are about 20 miles running along that line. And um, I spent about 18 years growing up by that forest er forested area there, my parents' place. And down here, so I traveled to the east in one direction as a kid to go to school and then later on in high school, I went in the opposite direction, up that highway. And uh, this road actually carried me to friends and family and really important locations throughout my, those first 18 years of my life. So there was my parents' office, um, my great-grandparents' house, which is in Wyman, an area named after our family also took me to places, locations that have good memories. So where I learned how to swim, later became a lifeguard. My aunt and uncle's house. My best friend's house. Other friends' houses. So it also took me to places like the arena where I was a figure skater and my brother played hockey, and to pl a place deep in the bush which had a sand pit, and we went there when we were teenagers, and we used to probably drink a little too much and make out and burn things. <laughs> <laughs> and to build on these, th um, these locations, they're actually these, um, they're all associated with memories. And so these green dots represent great or hilarious memories. Okay. Um, there is also birth, death, and tragedy associated with spots along these roads. And I know these roads probably be better than the back of my hand. Um, and all of these dots, including the blue dots, they're emotional triggers. Every time I drive along them, or think of the locations or the people that live along them, that inhabit them. And I'm sure this is probably not an unfamiliar experience to you. Uh, so to give you some perspective on how this landmass translates to where I am now, this is a map of Leeds at the same scale. And in my life, I will never, ever get to know this map, as well as I know the hills, seasonal road bumps, and, and the people and the stories of the Pontiac. It's impossible. This area is, is far too compact with population and road networks. So, but the fact is that, is that I have tried. And I'm going to come back to this map in a, in a little bit to explain how I've tried. Um, but before I do that, I have a couple more roads to show you. So I moved away from the Pontiac over here to Lenoxville um, to pursue my education and to explore new spaces. There are about 270 miles between these two red dots, or pink dots. 
And here at 18, I was sponsored by the Canadian International Development Agency, which is a pretty amazing agency in Canada. Anyway, to go to Peru uh, for six weeks with my classmates and um, really the reason for us going was just to open our eyes to another culture. And before we left, uh, we took a course on Peruvian economics. And our lecturer told us a couple things that have forever stuck with me as an artist and as a designer. And they've really completely affected my practice. This is what he said. You can't change the world. And I was 18 at the time, and I thought the world was my oyster, so I wasn't really sure about that statement. But then he followed it up with something really intelligent. And he said, you can have an impact on how people choose to experience it. And he also told us that we should know our own country before we form judgment on another. So I picked up to move again. It was in like 98. So, um, and these two statements really affected the next few years of my life. So they affected my creativity and my learning. And they, they just affected what I did. I moved to Toronto, that's about 430 miles away. And I thought I'd better get to know my own country so that in the future I can travel outside of it intelligently. It took me about four years to travel to these areas in Canada. Sometimes I stayed for a week, a couple weeks, sometimes several weeks at a time. Um, and I used obvious methods of transportation, trains, planes, and automobiles. And after a while, I kind of lost track of how many miles I was covering. Um, but by this point, I was really in love with my country. I, you know, I just thought it was a great place. The people, the freedom, and the geography. And, um, I, a lo and the reason I had picked up that I've fallen in love with it is because along these locations, I picked up so many amazing stories. They were located stories really about those regions and the people that lived them, there. So near the end of my time in Toronto, um, I took a course at York University called Artist as Activist. And because of that, I read this book. And then I ended up traveling up to Quebec City, which is in 2001, about 200, sorry, 500 miles away. And um, I, I, was, I went up there in 2001 to document the protests that were happening at the Summit of Americas. And that's actually where my heart got broken. So regardless of whether or not my heart was into the politics of the situation, I was standing on an overpass documenting the pro protesters' festivities. And this event um, was purposely nowhere near the political situation that was happening, the political center. Um, and what happened, so what you're seeing here is actually an ambush. We were corralled by the police from both, on both sides of the overpass, and helicopters pressed down on us from above. And to get out of the situation, people were jumping 30 to 40 feet down to the road below. Um, and the panic and the fog, you can see, is caused from pepper spray. And the real panic came because they started shooting us with rubber bullets. I left that situation in complete shock um, that in Canada something could happen like this. And especially because it was an unprovoked situation. But what really opened my eyes was um, the, knowledge, like the knowledge that the Prime Minister of the time kind of refused to acknowledge that the people had experienced this. And then he further ignored that the protesters had been there in the city to bring his attention to something that he didn't, they didn't agree with. So 
it was almost like if I and other photographers hadn't been there to document the situation, it wasn't, wouldn't have happened because it was just dismissed. Um, so because of that situation, and because and, and, not, and because I felt that I had really explored my own country, I decided that at that point there were some complexities in my own country that I really understood or started to understand. And I realized it was time to leave to explore some other countries. I spent some time in Central America, about a year, and then another year in Asia. And in those locations, I learned a lot, and I met amazing people, and I accumulated more stories, all, of course, located. And then um, in late 2003, I became a British citizen, and I moved over here. So, but I was living, actually, in Winchester in the south, and in the North American way, I took a road trip up north. <laughs> I would try and pronounce that in a Yorkshire accent, but I'd fail. So, <laughs> um, but I, dis I really discovered Yorkshire when I came up here. And so um, <laughs> I came to Leeds in 2004. Um, I cashed my life savings to my mom's complete dismay. And I was here. And I fell in love again. Which brings me back to this map. I started thinking, how can I get to know this area of the world better? Um, and it, because this area is so far more populated, how can I get to know it? If I want to enrich my life in Leeds the way it is here in the Pontiac, I can't draw on my family and friends to make connections. And I can't just go knock on people's doors. <laughs> and ask them who they are. So those people who know me, I, I'm a little eccentric, but there's a line I definitely draw. <laughs> so what I did, um, I started to draw creatively on these things, which were the new new in 2005. Blogs, mobile phones, social mapping, GPS. Um, and, and slowly, through some crazy hacking in 2005 and 2006, um, and working collaboratively with my partner, Ben Halsell, we started to make them talk together, um, talk to each other. Um, this is really automated now, but as you all know, um, but it's not, it wasn't so easy back then. Um, so then we started to use these tools to interact with the public and to, with people in general. And this is what happened. We asked the people of Leeds through our blog um, what we should do, go and see in Leeds, in the city. And then we systematically traveled across the city, around the city, through the city to their requests, logging everything from mobile phone, on our mobile phones and transmitting automatically up to our blog so that it updated in real time. Simultaneously, we used GPS to log our journeys, um, which led on to Our City, Our Music, which is a collaborative project run by myself and Ben Hulsell again and Ben Dalton. And actually, um, in the first instance, uh, extended to involve over 50 different artists, emerging artists from the city. So the vision was to shoot videos of local musicians performing within the city and to embed them on a GPS-enabled mobile device. So we pitched the idea at the Between Conference in 2008, and we won the Exploding Narratives Prize to develop the project with HP Labs, um, their Emscape software. And this is what we were aiming for to pull bands, filmmakers, and GPS technology together to make Leeds its first geolocated album. This was our first test with local musicians Ruth Vicara and Gary Stewart. And once we'd done this, we knew what we were dealing with technically. So we um, put a call out online 
for emerging filmmakers and musicians in Leeds to be a part of the project. Um, then we assembled a team of professionals uh, from both the film and music industry within Leeds uh, <clears throat> to, to help us select our album. We drew 50% from the online application and the other 50% were nominated through the panel of experts. Um, but what made the project really interesting for me was that um, we, all, we asked all the musicians to choose three locations within the city and then to tell us why they had chosen those locations and tell us a story about those locations. So not only were we look, um, interested in working with great artists in the city, we really wanted to um, archive their memories and their interpretations of the city. This is one of the first planning maps that came out of the meeting with the panel. And it's a low res image that's become very low res up here, but anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, and so we plotted all the potential locations in the city for the shoots. This is the final map that was embedded in the GPS enabled device. So the pink dots indicate spaces where videos and stories were, are located. I've got a few images of shoots. So this one was behind Kirkgate Market with the Gary Stewart band setting up. This is Ellen and the Escapades shot by James, Ro James Rhodes and animated by Nikki Narrows. It's set in one of those small ginnels off Brigitte Street. This is Super Powerless uh, on the Town Hall Steps, shot by Anna Palmiocchi. This is Ben Dalton here on the right, um, setting up a binaural sound equipment to record uh, the sound that which we inputted into the videos. This is actually in the Hyde Park Picture House with Eskimo twins. So we also ran a professional development program for all our participants, which introduced them to music uh, industry and the media. Filmmakers received workshops on recording, uh, binor doing bin binaural recordings and producing for small screen devices. And in this particular workshop, we had Jez Willis from the Utah Saints and Ben Cryer from the BBC talking about their careers and advising our participants on methods of promotion. We launched on June 20th and 21st with a party for our filmmakers and musicians. And some of the bands performed. The event was advertised across the city um, on the internet and on local forums as well as in the usual leads methods on these big billboards columns. You can experience the album in this way from the comfort of your couch um, by moving the icons over the select, and uh, moving your mouse over the icons, you can select a video. Or you can take it to come out and experience it on the streets in the location that it was designed for which is a really great experience. So we've shown, we've given tours to over 200 people and more people have experienced it on their own. This is actually my mom, who I think now believes I've made the right decision. And um, she's here watching Ellen and the Escapades video in situation, in action. This is uh, people watching the Super Powerless video on the town hall steps. And I just thought I'd uh, come to an end here because like the images I showed earlier from the summit in Quebec City, if we had not done this project, we would not have a video of shot at the Leeds International Pool or what was the Leeds International Pool. Um, nor would we have a great story about the very, very special history accompanying that video or that space. With our city, our music, we literally used the city as our platform. And we did this with a huge team of people who are willing to share their skills, their creativity, and their ideas to help us archive part of the cultural scene that exists here. In doing so, we use new tools 
and social media to contribute to the city's cultural scene and embed accumulated narratives within the city. After six years of living here, I can't say that I, I know it, and I don't think that I ever will the way that I know the Pontiac. Um, and the reality is, as a designer and as an artist, I will aspire to change, I, I won't ever aspire to change the world, but I have chosen, perhaps in modest ways, um, to use my interests in mapping and accumulating local stories and to understand Leeds better, and also to fall in love with the city. And then I use my knowledge to form narrative and social systems for sharing so that those who want to can experience these located situations as well. Thanks.